Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Breakfast with Blaha, and today I'm having steak and uh, guacamole. All right, let's, let's talk about food. Uh, a while back I put up a picture of, again, breakfast like this. Technically it was yesterday, but this will be a couple weeks down the road. And, you know, people said, oh, are you doing keto? No, not really. I'm eating like 300 grams of protein. Then questions came in and people asked, well, if you're doing that, then, then that's a flip-flop from your protein recommendations. Like, no, it's not. I have to get calories from somewhere. Uh, which, again, you come over to this bizarre idea that because I'm doing something, that the numbers don't match up with some minimum or recommendation I give that it's it changes the information that I'm putting out. And protein intake is a little more nuanced than that. But the thing that people need to remember before we even get into that, and I, I made a status on this the same day because of some of the questions I was getting about that. Uh, a lot of you guys clearly are not big yet. Or you're, you have a very, 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 very low activity level. And the reason I say that, uh, because you're not eating enormous amounts of food. And when I made that status, a bunch of my fans chimed in here like, yep, yeah, I eat 4,500 calories a day. I cut on 3,500, so on and so forth. A lot, of, a lot of serious lifters. When you are physically active and you train hard and you have muscle, your calorie needs are enormous. Okay, a lot of us eat more than the average morbidly obese person in terms of, of total calories. We have to. Our energy needs are that high. And so when we start discussing recommendations of what you need for a certain role, what people have to understand is that we have to fill our calories with something. I literally have been cutting and losing weight on over 3,000 calories a day. My last bulk was 5,500. You, you see where we're going here? So when someone says, oh man, you, you sure eat a lot of protein. You eat a lot of yogurt. You eat a lot of peanut butter. You eat way too much of this one food. And it's like, I can't even maintain my weight. What are you talking about? I'm losing weight. Lifters and athletes need a lot of food. Okay, we need to drop this silly bullshit idea that's being sold. Oh, you can just fast your way to being jacked. I mean, that's not how it works. Go look at when you hear about some of these Olympic athletes, the crazy diets they eat, just the junk food. You're like, well, that guy's lean and in shape. Yeah, he's just trying to get his calories in. Right? I've known of lean athletes, and lean I mean sub 10%, who eat donuts every day. You know why? Because they burn it. So when we start talking about food, we have to get our calories from somewhere. Okay. And it, it's actually, the protein recommendations that I give, they're not for all benefits. They are for one specific benefit, and that is muscle protein synthesis muscle growth. In other words, studies on muscle growth are finding the upper threshold is 1.6 grams per kilogram body weight. So for me, that's about 160 grams, right? Everyone but Eric Helms's data agrees that that's what you need to preserve muscle in a deficit too. He, his study is the outlier and some people have, have debunked it and we're going to get into all that. That's our protein needs for muscle purposes, whether it's preservation or gaining. But you know what? Protein also has calories. Protein also has certain metabolic benefits. Protein has certain benefits as far as connective tissue recovery, and particularly as we get older. So there's a point where it's like, okay, yeah, this is what you need to gain muscle, because that's what people ask. How much can I use towards building muscle? Which is silly, because it's actually almost none. To be honest, it's a few grams. But when we look at the studies of muscle growth, what, what intakes, instead of how much is used to build muscle, because that's a stupid ass question, what protein intake maximizes muscle growth? Well, we have that. that that's not changing. However, 
satiety thermic effect metabolic benefits. It's a big deal. Take a case of someone like me during this phase, I am running lower carbs. Why? Because I want tons of healthy fats in my diet. I function really good on fat. My inflammation goes way down when I get plenty of poly and monounsaturated fats. My joints feel better. My tendons feel better. I also retain less water. Less, less boofy. So, there's a lot of reasons why I do it. I'm doing that. But, I still need glucose. Some glucose for training fuel. We can argue that uh, ATP and things can be replenished off dietary fat. And ATP is a big part of my training fuel. But a glycolytic training is going to require some, some carbohydrate. Our brain requires some. Uh, I don't eat a lot of them. There's some in my diet. I mean, you see the guacamole and stuff that has carbs. But I eat really high protein to replenish it. Now people say, well, wouldn't it just be easier to eat carbohydrate? When I'm losing body fat, maybe not. Can we come back over to the thermic effect? There's a high energy cost in converting protein into glucose. If you're cutting, do you guys see where I'm going? Let's you eat a little more calories while maintaining your deficit because it's calories in, calories out. That thermic effect of the protein, the impact, the metabolic cost of converting it to glucose raises your calories out. Number two, it's satiating. Number three, we come back over to things like tendon health. Right? So there's reasons why I'm doing it. However, even if those reasons didn't exist, let's say my cutting needs for whatever this week required me to eat 3,200 calories. I've got to get those calories somewhere. I like steak. I like meat. I can use an extra amount of meat, even if it ends up being 100 grams or 130 grams of protein over my optimal intake, I'm still, I'm just using it for calories at that point. And if it's a food I like and it's satiating and it works good with what I'm doing, it's fine. But it doesn't change the information. It doesn't mean that the average person needs the, the, the protein. And I go back to the other point, if your carbohydrates are higher, you definitely don't don't need it all right you don't need it but in my case we still got to make it all work and I think the thing that a lot of this shows is my point is when I do something like this I try to point out to you guys this is why macros aren't as important as people claim they are because you got to fill your calories somewhere and barring certain circumstances there's a lot of overlap between whether you can use carbs, fat, or protein for fuel, like with an enormous chunk of your discretionary calories. All right, you have minimums. You have minimums. And outside of some of those minimums, it's just going to come down to wh what is working best for you to eat based upon a set of circumstances. But we can burn for fuel because we have to have fuel. We have to, especially if we're training. Even if you're trying to lose weight, your calorie needs still need to match. Carbs, fat, and protein are all energy sources at the end of the day. And they are largely, and again, I don't want to say completely, they're largely interchangeable. But we have to eat something. We're not going to get jacked or even retain muscle tissue on air and sunlight. We're not plants. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.